Hi, my name is Michael Gwynn. I'm the Director of Strategic Projects at Fatian Technologies with US headquarters in Santa Clara, California. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the Azure AD password list and OTP MFA and with the subtopic of Fatian FIPS and form factors, giving you an overview on the importance and explanation of FIPS, as well as information and the importance of having different form factors uh, to choose from for your password list and OTP MFA. So in the process, I'd like to go over a little bit about what I'll be discussing in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, we'll talk about FIPS, we'll talk about form factors, and then I'll give you some more details at the end uh, about FATIAN. And as a bonus, uh, if you can stick to the end of the uh, presentation, I have some information on a buy one, get one uh, offer from FATIAN. What is FIPS and what does it mean? Well, FIPS is the Federal Information Processing Standards, and they uh, have a publication which uh, lists all the information that's in FIPS. Um, and it specifies the requirements that uh, are to be used to satisfy the cryptographic module uh, review of the devices that are going for the FIPS certifications. And um, there are multiple areas to be covered uh, throughout the FIPS certification. Uh, and that includes checking both the insides of the device, uh, the mechanics of it, the digital uh, uh, operation of it, as well as the physical aspect of the device, making sure that everything is running properly and to standards. And so uh, the users of a FIPS certified product uh, can be assured that they're using a quality product. In the cryptographic uh, module ver validation program, which is what Fatian is going through with two of uh, our current systems, uh, Biometric and OTP, um, the FIPS uh, requires that a third party test the device and validates uh, their performance and then reports to NIST, uh, who does a, a, a certification uh, a, a to the device that the um, device owners or operators can then um, pro, uh, promote. Uh, the areas covered, again, are multiple parts of the uh, cryptographic module validation program. Uh, five steps to the FIPS process. Uh, the first part is assessment and training, or in, I'm sorry, assessment and testing. Uh, and in that part, they will review the uh, actual functioning of the uh, product. Uh, the second step of the FIPS 140-2 certification is the uh, source code review. And in that source code review, they'll review every aspect of the actual source code to make sure that there is nothing added uh, into it or nothing harmful in that um, in the actual source code uh, functioning uh, the device. Uh, step three is operational testing where they will make sure that it performs the functions that it needs to perform uh, as a multi-factor authentication system uh, for FATIAN for OTP uh, as they're doing the testing on the uh, FATIAN OTH OTP uh, cryptographic module, uh, they're going to see if it uh, provides the proper uh, OTP uh, OTH solution uh, for the user. So they're going to make sure it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, number three is a validation report submission that once all the uh, tests uh, and the first parts are verified that the uh, submission uh, will be made. Uh, and that's where it transfers from the uh, third party uh, provider that's doing the all, all the testing and verification to NIST. And then uh, at that point, it will be in a uh, have a validation coordination. Uh, and in that situation, it'll go into the final review, making sure all the tests are passed and all the certifications and processes 
are accomplished uh, to the FIPS uh, standards. Uh, some assumptions and requirements during the process. It's uh, important to do uh, have a schedule and communication uh, policy, meaning that the organization that is working uh, with the third party to get the FIPS certification is in contact and in communication and uh, has regular meetings, et cetera. Uh, the, the second part of the um, assumption requirements is that there is documentation, uh, any uh, either from the company or third party documentation uh, that is available uh, needs to be provided and uh, submitted with the uh, request for the uh, FIP certification. Uh, the documentation all gets to be reviewed in the uh, third portion uh, of the requirements, meaning that I uh, want to make sure that every component is accounted for, uh, all the paperwork is uh, proper and ready to be submitted. And then throughout this process, there is uh, ongoing communications and dialogues uh, for uh, getting the FIPS to be uh, uh, properly certified to make sure that the third party company is working with the device owning company uh, so they can get the uh, processes completed properly as well as the documentation that goes with that submit it to NIST and hopefully get a uh, FIPS 140-2 certification. Uh, let's talk about uh, more about what the uh, current one is now, uh, as of this past uh, September, uh, there is a new uh, FIPS 140-3. Uh, there is overlap uh, on the current FIPS program, and this will uh, be the, the next step or the next uh, level of FIPS certifications uh, once uh, the FIPS 140-2 closes out. And uh, that closes out, uh, if you can see on the bottom uh, portion of that, in September of 2021 this year, uh, FIPS 140-2 will be closed out uh, for any new testing and uh, all, all uh, tests after that will go into the FIPS 140-3 uh, process and requirements on there. Here are, um, uh, here's the example of the four uh, state levels of FIP certification. Uh, starting on the left side, the left column is level one. Uh, well, the, the, the far left column are the areas which are checked uh, in the certification process. And then up on top are the four uh, levels listed that creates four different columns of what is to be checked during each uh, FIPS level certification. And it's important to know that level one is the lowest, working up to level two, level three, and level four is the highest. Um, and each, uh, at each higher level, there are more requirements and a higher standard uh, for the FIPS certification uh, to proceed. Uh, what are some of the benefits for the security of Microsoft uh, users? who are using FIPS uh, or any users who are using uh, the, uh, a FIPS certified product. Um, it, first of all, it assures them that the technology that is presented or has the FIPS certification has passed a number of tests uh, by an accredited lab. So uh, that third party that facilitates the testing has to be accredited. Uh, it also verifies that the best results uh, the test results have been uh, validated and um, they were true and it actually performed as stated on there and it was verified and documented. Um, and so that uh, as the final result is that there is a verification uh, of the information as well as the documentation and the operation of the device, the device can now be used safely for secure sensitive information once it has the FIPS certification. Uh, all other considerations are that it is digitally secure as uh, the software uh, in the uh, device uh, as well as the hardware is uh, checked and verified that it's functioning properly. 
the functionality uh, of the overall device means not only is it safe, but it actually does what it's supposed to do, uh, either generate an OTP um, as an OTP device going through the process or uh, with our FIPS uh, FIDO, uh, FIDO um, biometric security key going through the process. The functionality is to work properly with the uh, FIDO protocol, so it does uh, perform the multi-factor authentication uh, with uh, the passwordless solution using the fingerprint biometric. And then lastly, the quality assurance that you know that the, the quality of items uh, that you're using for your enterprise or your organization is at a higher level of quality uh, because it's not only has all the uh, items on there, but they've been verified and tested and documented. Let's talk about uh, Azure hardware format uh, options. Um, so for the format options um, for hardware, you could have security keys, and there's a number of different types of uh, security keys. Um, there are smart cards, and that's the standard smart card uh, that you have, uh, looks like a, a credit card. Uh, there's the biometric smart card, which uh, Faytian has, and that's the uh, uh, smart card with the chip, but it also has the biometric uh, fingerprint reader on there that reads the fingerprint and locks it down only in the device. Uh, other form factors for Azure uh, that could have FIP certification, is could be a one-time password token, uh, OTP uh, cards, and OTP mini cards. So OTP cards are the credit card uh, shaped cards uh, that when you press a button, it'll generate the one-time password and the mini cards are the smaller or about 40% of the credit card size uh, that can generate a one-time password and that can be used with uh, Azure. Uh, two other items uh, in considering Azure uh, form factor options um, is that the form factor could be, uh, that uh, could have connectivity through USB-A, connectivity through USB-C, uh, NFC, as well as uh, BLE, uh, and that's the different ways that the form factors can connect with uh, the devices. Um, and then the characteristic options uh, can include either fingerprint biometric or non-fingerprint biometric. So these are all the different form factors and some of the connectivities and characteristics associated with them that can be used uh, for the Microsoft Azure product. Uh, one quick option here is to uh, put basically the, the multiple functions in one uh, device or solution. And we call that a convert access uh, card solution. And what that does, it performs the, form, the four functions as indicated. Number one, it can serve as the identity card. And in this case, uh, Jane Doe and Charlotte Thompson look awful similar, I'm just saying. Um, but uh, you could also uh, have in these uh, in either of these devices multi-factor authentication. Uh, the device on the left with the fingerprint biometric, uh, it can be used for passwordless uh, access to Azure. Uh, the device on the right, um, it can be used with an OTP, uh, a TOTP solution for Azure. Um, so either one of these can be uh, used with Azure. Uh, the third function that they, either one of these cards can uh, perform is a physical access that will actually uh, open uh, the, the doors uh, or allow access uh, in the different areas. So there are some limitations and some, some good advantages uh, of that. So uh, we, can, we can discuss that if it's something that you're, you're looking at. Uh, however, this is just an option of combining uh, those three features onto the car, either one of the cards. Uh, the last and final piece of the card uh, or function that the Converge card can do is it could interact with IoT or Internet of Things. And with that interaction, um, the device uh, can indicate when a person is present 
and that's why uh, the uh, the biometric is important. There may be new things that an enterprise want to do wants to do with IoT, monitor uh, temperatures, uh, record uh, who's actually present in certain rooms, and uh, with the RF uh, ID, uh, it can be used uh, with that uh, these converged access cards to actually interact uh, with IoT. All right. And again, I'm just kind of giving the overview. If you want more information, be happy to assist you. All right, who is FATN and what do we do? Uh, FATN has the mission to provide secure, innovative, and value priced uh, security products in a wide variety of uh, different product areas. And those areas include authentication, identification, access management, and payment. Uh, we've been, uh, FATN has been in business for over 20 years. Uh, with about a thousand employees and about half of those in R&D. So we love our R&D projects. We've worked with uh, a number of the uh, major technology and security companies to uh, create solutions that are customized and white label branded. Uh, we have clients all over the world. We, uh, Fatian is a member of the Microsoft Intelligence Security Association and uh, Fatian is a seated board member uh, of the FIDO Alliance. So we're not just a member, we're actually a board member uh, of some of the greatest organizations uh, uh, that are involved uh, together with the FIDO protocol. And FIDO is uh, Fast Identity Online. Here's some options on form factors uh, from Fatian. Uh, we have a number of different uh, connections and form factors. Uh, including devices that connect up with um, Lightning or the uh, iOS, as well as devices that use Bluetooth NFC. And then as you go across uh, into the middle area, we have biometric devices in different uh, connectivity uh, fashions, uh, USB-A, USB-C, uh, the, the black um, uh, uh, all in pass uh, has the opportunity to use not only USB, but also NFC or uh, Bluetooth uh, with the fingerprint biometric and Azure uh, for a true passwordless experience. Uh, on the right, we have some card options. Uh, and again, the biometric fingerprint card uh, can work for multiple functions, but it can uh, easily perform uh, passwordless uh, sign on to Azure. Uh, the next device is a little bit thicker. Uh, that has a battery. The biometric card does not have any battery. It's powered by RFID. Uh, so the All In Pass Plus uh, gives you the ability to use Bluetooth, uh, NFC, or the connected USB C cable uh, that's on the device. And uh, here we're again, we're showing the uh, campus card, which is basically uh, an OTP card that can be used for our identification as well as physical access. So these are OTP solutions and for the OTP form factors, uh, the form factors include uh, one, uh, one touch tokens at the top, the cards at the bottom, uh, within the cards is the mini cards, the, the smaller version that goes on that. And then we have a number of different uh, other OTP solutions, in including challenge and response OTP, QR code reading OTP, as well as the new uh, voice uh, uh, OTP solution. Uh, for those who are visually impaired, uh, it'll sound uh, through the process and provide a, a one-time password. Okay, our form factors show diversity and uh, we include a biometric uh, form factor. And the two uh, items that FATN currently has in process with FIPS is our FIPS biometric and our OTP projects. Um, and they're, they're listed there. Uh, they're underway, they're on the NIST uh, website uh, to see where they are as they're uh, tracking their progress. All right, as a special bonus for uh, tolerating the presentation, give you the opportunity to get a buy one, get one from Fatian. Uh, we have our website there uh, on the bottom 
And as you're going through checkout, uh, you can, this applies to any uh, passwordless security key, any of our FIDO keys, um, or biometric smart card. Uh, so not every product in our uh, system uh, applies to this. So it's either a passwordless security key or a biometric smart card. Um, use that uh, bottom, uh, the uh, coupon that's on there, the Fatian Ignite 2021 BOGO. And uh, you'll get, uh, if you buy one security key, we'll provide the second one at no charge. All right, this concludes uh, my presentation. Presentation. Thank you very much for uh, attending. If you have any questions, we have a number of great uh, individuals that are available uh, through our organization and they're ready, willing, and available to assist you.